Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Joanna and I am a fourth year mathematics student at the University of Oxford. Having just finished my second to last ever term at Oxford, I thought this might be the perfect timing to delve deeper into all of the courses that I studied in third year, for sure the toughest year at Oxford so far in terms of the math that I studied. Reminiscing on experiences that shaped my time here, I can for sure say that from the very early mornings tackling problem sheets to the late night discussions with my friends, each moment has left a mark on my pursuit of mathematical knowledge here. It has definitely been a year of rediscovering the joy of doing maths, exploring new areas of mathematics that I didn't even know existed, rekindling friendships and traveling with my uni friends, which definitely made the enjoyment of this academic year spike up. Every course that I studied this year definitely has its innovative bits and pieces that I for sure find worth sharing, so that's what we are going to do in today's video. But before we jump right into it, I think it's important to acknowledge the importance of continuously seeking to learn something new, to develop your critical thinking skills and to have the urge to always perfect your understanding of concepts you are working with perhaps every day. That's why I want to introduce you to Brilliant who are very very kindly sponsoring today's video. Brilliant is the best interactive and fun tool that you can use to learn anything in math, data science or computer science. Whether you are a high school student just wanting to study more beyond the level of the classroom or even a fields professional wanting to dive deeper into a topic of your interest. They offer thousands of courses ranging from topics such as basic maths or computer science to more niche ones such as large language models that I believe anyone can benefit from learning. I have been using Brilliant since the very start of my university career to allow myself to just continue learning topics that were tangential to my favorite subjects in maths, such as algorithms and data structures or neural networks. Whenever I was on a break from uni, I would find Brilliant to be the best tool for me to practice my skills in a non-pressure, interactive and fun way that also allows for career progress for as little as a few minutes per day. The brilliant team consisting of professionals from universities such as MIT or Duke or companies such as Microsoft or Google always add more courses to the website and are keeping up to date with the current trends in tech. For example, a few courses that I have been enjoying lately were creative coding and predicting with probability, where you also get to work with real life data sets, which I've always found amazing. If any of these has sparked up your interest, don't hesitate to use my link brilliant.org slash Roman that I also have in the description down below to get started on your learning journey. Moreover, Brilliant offers a 30 day free trial and a bonus 20% off an annual subscription for anyone using my link. So don't hesitate to click the link in the description and start learning. Learning. And now let's return to my university learning journey. So the way that a third year mathematics course at Oxford is structured is very, very simple. There are absolutely no compulsory modules and you get complete freedom over the course that you want to take. You have to offer eight units for the exam, which counts 60% towards your classification. So there's definitely quite a bit of pressure there. You can definitely take more options if you have more time or if you have more real power, but you only need to sit an exam in eight topics. Having this complete freedom felt both like a relief and a challenge for me because when you think about it i could choose what topics i thought sounded cool but i also had to make a conscious choice over the courses that would be left out i already knew at that point that my main areas of interest in maths were computational biology probability and statistics and definitely machine learning but i also didn't want to leave out some pure maths just for the fun of it so i chose nine courses and set eight of them in the exam which were Functional Analysis 1, Probability Measure and Martingales, Information Theory, Statistical Lifetime Models, Optimization for Data Science, Statistical Machine Learning, Applied Probability, Stochastic Modeling of Biological Processes, and Mathematical Models of Financial Derivatives. I will rank all of these based on my overall enjoyment of the course, the lectures and the problem sheets, as well as the exam that we had to sit in the respective course. The categories are going to be the exact same as in the previous two years. You know, I gotta keep it as a tradition on this channel. Link to both of those videos down in the description below. So the categories are gonna be from the highest or the best to the lowest or the worst. Could do this forever and still be happy. You feel satisfied when finishing the problem, only doing this because there is an exam in it and when will I ever use this in real life? So without further ado, let's get right into the tier ranking. Starting off really, really strong with what was possibly the hardest exam that I have ever taken, 
Functional Analysis 1. This course builds on core analysis and linear algebra that we studied in second year. The main gist is that we would have a firm knowledge of real and complex normed vector spaces, the notions of completeness, separability, and density. There is a lot of talk about the, the Banach spaces and bounded linear operators, and eventually proving the Hahn-Banach theorem. Well, all of the proofs and results in this course feel like a very well-written narrative once you get into the abstract mindset of norm spaces and throw your finite dimensional intuition out of the window. This course unveils things that feel so cool and so satisfying and you feel like everything ties up so nicely and neatly together. The problem sheets were very, very fun to do and proving the things us felt like a game every single time. However, Sadly, this course loses quite a few points for me simply for the way the exam is set. It is unbelievably harder than the problem sheets or any of the examples covered in the lectures. There were questions in the exams that you had no idea how to even start them, how to approach the ideas behind them. And I found myself using some proof techniques that I've only ever used in high school Olympiads. So yeah, only doing this because there is an exam in it. It doesn't feel right when you think about it, but you know, the content was great, the exam kind of balances it out to just leave this category. On a completely, completely different note, we have stochastic modeling of biological processes. This course covers a number of applications ranging in size from molecular dynamic structures of small biomolecules to stochastic modeling of groups of animals. The course starts with stochastic modeling of chemical reactions, including stochastic simulations algorithms and mathematical methods, which can be used for analysis of stochastic models. Different stochastic spatio-temporal models are then studied, including models of diffusion and stochastic reaction diffusion modeling. This course offered so many new techniques. For example, I still am using the stochastic algorithms that I learned here in my dissertation today. It offered a completely, completely new area of maths for me that I found to be so excited and innovative, something that I have never thought I would be able to do or like get the chance to explore when I was first learning about maths in middle school. The teaching style was very, very different. Instead of having some lecture notes to study from, we were given a book written exactly by the lecturer. Very unpopular opinion amongst my colleagues, but I enjoyed this approach quite a lot. For the exam, it was also quite a bit of a different approach. You had to learn how to state the exam, if this makes any sense. Um, by which I mean that there were a few key ideas that kept showing up in all of the past papers. So once you mastered those, it was definitely better than it looked beforehand. So I guess a solid you feel satisfied when finishing the problem. Definitely feel suitable to be in here. Right, optimization in data science. This course is quite a new one at Oxford and I think introducing it is very beneficial if you want to go further into anything related to machine learning or data science. Basically, optimization problems occur naturally in statistics, beta analysis, machine learning, and in signal and information processing. The efficient solution is, for example, the cornerstone of successfully training a ML model. This course covers a few of the typical problem formulations that appear in such large-scale modern models, and then focus specifically on gradient-based algorithms, namely deterministic and stochastic first-order methods, and their convergence and complexity analysis for mainly convex problems. A bit of a limitation here, as you can see, because we only deal with mainly convex problems, but there is always continuous optimization in fourth year to solve this. And yeah, what can I say? I absolutely love this course. The proof techniques were very much reminiscent of inequality type questions that I uh, did a lot of in high school for my Olympiads that I was always a massive fan of. And also the exam was the right amount of new ideas and proofs from the course. The one downside that I would say was maybe that because this course is very, very new, it felt a bit disorganized at times, but I think I liked it a bit too much to downgrade it even a tiny bit. So definitely could do this forever and still be happy, which is maybe also why I'm taking continuous optimization this year and I'm thoroughly enjoying that course as well. Now we have probability measure and martingales for sure the course the one course that i have put the most effort in ever obviously being so interested in probability which is both a fundamental way of viewing the world and a core mathematical discipline nowadays i was very very keen on taking this course no matter how difficult it felt this course develops the mathematical foundations essential for more advanced courses in probability theory. The first part of the course develops a more sophisticated understanding of measure theory and integration. So a lot about sigma algebras, pi lambda systems, the monotone class theorem or Kara Theodori's extension theorem. 
The second part focuses on key probabilistic concepts such as independence and conditional expectation. I genuinely never thought that it would be so difficult for me to understand basic things about conditional expectation, which has always felt like a no-brainer to me, but here we are, I guess. We then introduced the scream time martingales and established results needed to study their behavior. This was genuinely really, really cool. I enjoyed it a lot. It offered a new way of thinking about those, you know, interview type puzzles, questions about gambling. And it took me quite a lot of time to grasp the concepts needing for this course, especially in the first few chapters of the course when everything was super, super technical. So all, of, all about the measure theory part and to understand how to use them properly. I do now think this is an essential course for everyone that wants to do anything more advanced in probability theory or even the financial side of maths. The problem sheets and the exam were all very, very hard. I'm not gonna lie about that, but it was expected from this kind of course just by looking at the lecture notes. So definitely a strong, you feel satisfied when finishing the problem because it was at the end of the day one of my favorite courses that I've ever taken at Oxford. Information theory, a somewhat new area of maths, I would say. Information theory played an important role in the rise of the current information, digital or computer age, and it still motivates much research in diverse fields such as statistics and machine learning, physics, computer science and engineering. Every time you make a phone call, every time you store a file on your computer, query an internet search engine, watch a DVD, stream a movie, listen to an mp3 file, and so on, and very much so forth, algorithms run that are based on topics we discussed in this course. A large part of this course answers the questions of how much information is contained in a signal or a message, which we call source coding, and what the limits of information transfers over a channel that is subject to some noisy perturbations are, which we call channel coding. Definitely a lot of interesting and innovative concepts, a lot of nice proof ideas, again, some sort of inequality type proof. It feels really, really nice to rigorously study such day-to-day -day concepts when you feel like, when you think about it, because you use streaming movies and listening to mp3 files pretty much every single day of your life if you're like me and to just make mathematical statements about them felt very very satisfying however i felt like it could have been presented in a much more engaging and exciting way that it was because i felt like it was a bit dull when i first started learning about it but it got a lot more exciting only when i started revising the course for my exams so definitely just for the way it was presented, only doing this because there is an exam in it. Yeah, the side of me that wants to get into the financial world definitely believes that this is the coolest sounding course of all of them. A bit of a controversial opinion, I'm not gonna lie. The course aims to introduce students to derivative security valuation in financial markets. At the end of the course, we should be able to formulate a model for an asset price and then determine the price of a range of derivatives based on the underlying asset using arbitrage-free pricing ideas. We delved into arbitrage in finance, hedging in continuous time and the Black-Scholes model, European and American style options, Brownian motion and Ito's lemma, which was really, really nice to do calculation on. Like I genuinely really enjoyed that part. And also a lot of high level ideas about volatility, consumption-based pricing and so on. Here's the thing, the ideas and the proofs in this course were so useful for my internships and for understanding how the financial markets work. However, the lecture has just changed from previous years and it chose to shift the focus from rigorous, continuous martingale-like proofs to more sort of hand-wavy material, which was not ideal for people studying maths. It would probably have been more ideal for other kinds of students, but definitely felt a bit lacking for us in that terms. The exam, however, was probably one of the easiest I have ever taken at Oxford. So I'd also say that this is a solid only doing this because there is an exam in it, even though content wise, it would definitely go up. Statistical machine learning focused on a number of different ML methods and allowing students to basically gain understanding about their statistical foundation, which I find lacking in all of the online courses about ML that I have ever seen. Then basically it allows students to also learn to identify and use the appropriate method for a given data set and a given task. And it also offered the option to learn how to use the relevant Python uh, modules to analyze data, interpret results and evaluate the methods. The course studied unsupervised learning for the first week and a half. So just principal component analysis and k-means clustering then went into supervised learning. We studied a bunch of different things, a lot of new terminologies such as discriminative versus generative learning, 
generative classifiers, future expansion, the bias variance trade-off, decision trees, random forests, boosting, neural networks, and deep learning. This was a mouthful. I cannot stress it enough how useful this course has been for everything ranging from my internships to my personal projects, and it offered a great deal of useful insights and tricks into why we should use a specific machine learning model over another one, and how to mathematically prove the ideas behind a strong ML model. The exam and the sheets were both of an appropriate level of difficulty, I would say. I guess the exam focused a bit too much on linear algebra, but I guess what is machine learning without linear algebra, you know what I'm saying? So definitely it should go into could it is forever and still be happy. Applied probability, my favorite course without any hesitation. Look strong already, could it is forever and still be happy, but I'm still gonna talk about it. So this course is intended to show the power and range of probability by considering real examples in which probabilistic modeling is inescapable and useful. So it basically generalizes the screen type Markov chains and treats real world examples at their finest. We studied a lot of different concepts ranging from Poisson and birth processes, continuous time Markov chains, time reversal, renewal theory, all the way to applications in areas such as cues and queuing theory and stochastic epidemic modeling, which I am also looking at for my dissertation and my project in computational biology this year. It was by far the most excited I have been in a long while to tackle problem sheets and to go to lectures and understand these new and very, very fun concepts. The sheets were lovely, as well as the exam and the past papers. There was always something new to learn uh, and to prove when I was doing them. Only something new to discover that I learned. It was phenomenal. I also need to give a massive shout out to the lecturer of this course. Definitely impeccable skills, in my opinion. But yeah, need I say more, it could least forever and still be happy. Hands on, without a question. Lastly, Statistical Lifetime Models is the one course that I didn't take for the exam, but I still went to all of the lectures and did all of the problem sheets, so I can still talk about it. So, models introduced in probability courses are examined here more specifically in a life insurance context, where transitions typically model the passage from alive to dead, possibly with some intermediate stages such as loss of a limb or critically ill. The aim of the course is to develop strong statistical models to estimate these transition rates and more specifically to construct some life tables that form the basis in the calculation of life uh, insurance premiums. Survival analysis will allow consideration of the effects of covariates. The methods apply more widely than to just insurance models, so don't think this is all we talk about. So. It all sounded really fun, it sounded like something that I personally would enjoy, but that was definitely not the case for this course. As cliché as it may sound, there were far too many computations involved, far too many concepts that were not explained that clearly to me, and I just didn't find it exciting to study such models from my point of view. But I know that some people definitely loved this course, definitely took it for the exam, had high marks in it, so it's definitely just my personal opinion. I guess in a way what I found a bit lacking was that it felt very outdated and it probably would have benefited from some more up-to-date knowledge, from some more developed models, rather than just do all of these computations done. So yeah, I guess this will be the only course that goes into when will I ever use this in real life, just because I personally did not really enjoy the course. Yeah, so I guess this is my final ranking. As you can see, I have mainly nice and very enjoyable courses here. It has been for sure an amazing year in terms of learning, and I'm really, really glad that I chose these courses because as I said, each and every single one of them had its own innovative concepts and proof ideas. And at the end of the day, very beautiful mess behind every single one of them. Thank you for staying with me until the end. I definitely know that it has been quite a long and very messy, very technical video, but nonetheless, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have enjoyed me talking about maths for a long time. <laughs> Hit the like button if you did enjoy it, comment down below if you have any questions or maybe, maybe some video suggestions, anything that you like. Thanks again to Brilliant for very kindly sponsoring today's video. And lastly, I guess follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of me, more content maybe. And yeah, I will see you very, very soon with a new video. So goodbye, have a lovely day. I'm sick of daydreaming, I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline, want you by
my 